Today on Ion Northwest Politics, gun violence. It's an epidemic and Oregon's gun violence rates are skyrocketing. So how does this end? We speak with Ceasefire Oregon, who says a new initiative could be part of the answer. Plus, polar opposite candidates in Oregon's 5th Congressional District. We heard from Republican candidate Lori chavez Dreamer last week. This week, her opponent, Democrat Jamie McLeod Skinner, weighs in. And a controversial Saudi Arabian golf league tees off. And so does Oregon Senator Ron White. This is just basically sports washing. Why he says this new league is a cause for serious concern weeks before it comes to Oregon. Eye on Northwest Politics starts now. Thanks for joining us. This is Eye on Northwest Politics. I'm Ken Boddy. Let's get right to your top political headlines. The House Committee investigating the January 6, 2021 riot at the U.S. Capitol held their first hearing on Thursday night. The House panel showed Trump administration officials, including former Attorney General Bill Barr, saying they did not believe Mr. Trump's claims of a stolen election. The next hearing is scheduled for Monday, with several others scheduled for this month. Meanwhile, the House passed a package of gun control bills that would raise the minimum age requirement to buy semi-automatic weapons from 18 to 21. The bills would also ban large capacity gun magazines. However, it's unlikely these bills will pass the Senate. A group of bipartisan senators is working on more modest reforms like enhancing background checks and supporting so-called red flag laws. This nation and the city have been rocked by gun violence. We know the horrifying toll that it's taken in Uvalde, Texas and in Buffalo, New York. And in Portland, we're on pace to surpass the record number of gun-related homicides that we saw in 2021. Now Congress and state officials are grappling with what to do without infringing on Second Amendment rights. Ceasefire Oregon has been on the front lines of this debate since 1994. Now called the Ceasefire Oregon Education Foundation, the nonprofit is again at the center of trying to figure out what we should do about a problem we can't ignore or seem to solve. Penny Okamoto is executive director of Ceasefire Oregon. Thanks for joining me on Eye on Northwest Politics. I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much for taking this time. Well, Ceasefire is joining with Lift Every Voice Oregon, trying to get Initiative Petition 17 on the ballot. What is IP17 and what does it do? Sure, IP17 is a statewide initiative petition and we are gathering signatures right now. We've got until July 8th and uh, it's, looking, it's looking like we're gonna make it. We're pretty excited. So IP17 will do several things. One of the things that it will do is require a license to purchase a firearm. So anyone who already has a firearm does not need to be licensed, but if anyone wishes to purchase um, a new or used firearm trade or transfer a firearm would need to have um, a license to do so. Now this license would require a completed background check. So right now under current law, there's something called the default proceed rule. Most people know it as the Charleston loophole, which allows a gun seller to complete a sale within three business days if the background check does not come back. If a background check doesn't come back within three business days, the seller has the ability to move forward and complete the sale, but is not required to complete the sale. So IP17 would close the Charleston loophole, require completed sales. It would also require hands-on training for firearms as well as classroom training. And then the other aspect it would do is limit high capacity magazines to 10 rounds. How many signatures do you need and when are you trying to get it on the ballot to voters? Sure, we need 112,020 signatures. Uh, we're aiming for more than that, probably more like 130, 140,000. Uh, and the deadline is July 8th. We have to have it to the Secretary of State's office by July 8th. We're feeling pretty good about that. And then it would be on the November 22 ballot, so this November. The argument against uh, gun legislation is that it only restricts the rights of law-abiding gun owners since criminals don't follow the rules. What do you say to that? So um, normally what I say to that is, well, should we throw out all our laws then because criminals don't obey rules? So of course not, That's, we, we don't do that, that's silly. We have our, our laws against harming people, assault, against drugs. No, um, we keep all those and we keep those laws because we know that they work. 
Um, and one of the things that uh, licensing will do is to make sure that people who should not have a firearm have a much more difficult time purchasing one. Can't just go into a store, buy a firearm, uh, basically with almost no questions asked. Now we closed the private show loophole back in 2015 with the Oregon Firearm Safety Act. That was Senate Bill 941. Uh, but this actually requires um, a completed background check uh, and training uh, to purchase a firearm. As you've mentioned, Oregon already has gun laws on the books, including safe storage requirements, background checks. Uh, why do we need more than what we already have? Oh, gun violence is, it's a, it's a complex issue. Uh, we're not going to be able to um, address this issue with just you know, one law. And we see that um, in many other issues, whether we're dealing with uh, drugs, um, you know, people who um, break the laws when driving. So there are a lot of other, there are a lot of issues that, that um, go into making sure that um, we have reduced gun death and injury. One of the best um, products, I shouldn't say products, one of the best documents that I've seen actually was something that was produced um, by uh, an organization that I work very closely with, which is, which is GVpedia. It's called the Denver Accord. And I was one of the architects of the Denver Accord. And it's at the denveraccord.org. It is a roadmap to the best policies and laws to reduce gun violence. And the top two, licensing and registration. Those items are gonna do the most to reduce gun violence. Uh, but it also includes, you know, micro stamping. It includes um, community violence interruption programs. Uh, it includes um, banning assault weapons, uh, high capacity magazines. So that's an entire roadmap of what needs to be done to reduce gun violence. But we have over 400 million uh, firearms in the United States, more firearms than people. So this is a huge problem that's going to take decades uh, to bring under control. As we mentioned, the shootings in Uvalde and Buffalo prompted the U.S. House to pass national legislation, including raising the age of buying assault-style weapons from 18 to 21, also limiting gun magazine capacities. Uh, what do you think of that legislation, and does it look like uh, it will go through the U.S. Senate, because that seems to be the obstacle at this point? So right now, to get it through the U.S. Senate, we're going to need an additional um, 10 Republicans, um, and I just I don't see that happening. And here's why, because Republicans and a few Democrats, including Kurt Schrader, who by the way, did not, he voted against the Protect Our Children Act or Protect Our Kids Act is what it's called, excuse me. Kurt Schrader voted against that. He was only one of two Democrats to vote against that. So um, I don't see it passing and here's why. After Sandy Hook, the United States Congress got away with not passing any laws. They pleased the NRA, they pleased the National Sports Shooting Foundation, they pleased the Safari Club International, they pleased basically the people who, to whom they're beholden, right? And if they got away with it at Sandy Hook, they know they're gonna get away with it now, or at least that's what they think. So I don't see anything happening in the Senate, uh, but the truth of the matter is that if people want to see strong, effective legislation passed, they are going to need to vote in not just Democrats, but Democrats who are willing to support strong, effective legislation. Gun control vigorously opposed by many gun owners who cite their Second Amendment right to bear arms. How do you counter the constitutional argument as well as legitimate concerns that people have about protecting themselves? So there are three things there. So first of all, we know that the majority of gun owners, for example, more than 80% of gun owners actually support background checks for all gun sales. Um, we know, for example, that 59% of black gun owners support licensing. So the idea that um, gun owners don't support this, these laws just simply doesn't bear out. The studies don't, don't, uh, sh don't show that to, be, that to be true. Second of all, everything that we're doing is completely constitutional. We have to remember under the Heller decision from the Supreme Court, um, uh, Justice um, Scalia had actually said that the Second Amendment is not an absolute right, just like free speech is not an absolute right. Um, no one has the right to, for example, go into a crowded theater and yell fire. So uh, rights um, are, are definitely limited. Uh, and then there was a third part that you asked about that. I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, I was asking you about uh, legitimate concerns that people have about protecting oh. themselves. Right. So we also know, too, that um, 
the concept of self-defense gun use is really kind of a myth. Uh, we take a look at the numbers from the Gun Violence Archive, uh, and they show usually 2,000 or fewer uh, defensive gun uses a year, and not all those defensive gun uses are successful. Meanwhile, um, it, we have tens of thousands, 45,000 people who use a firearm uh, either to kill themselves or to kill someone else. So it's just not, it's just not a reality. If people think they're going to get a gun to um, protect themselves, uh, okay, um, but they need to make sure that they understand that a firearm in the home doubles the risk that someone in that home is going to commit suicide, excuse me, be killed by homicide and triples the risk of suicide. A firearm in the home also uh, increases by five times the rate of women who are killed in domestic violence. So it's an interesting marketing tactic, but it really is just a marketing tactic. And let's take a quick look, 400 million guns in the United States. I don't see gun violence becoming a distant memory by any means. So no, more guns not making us safer. Penny Okamoto, thank you for joining me on Eye on Northwest Politics. A true pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about this. Next, fresh off her upset over longtime Congressman Kurt Schrader, Jamie McCloud Skinner now has her sights set on Washington, D.C. She's trying to defeat a Republican opponent whose views are 180 degrees opposite from hers. McCloud Skinner returns to Eye on Northwest Politics now that the stakes are even higher. Our conversation after the break.